stuck my head up from fish filleting. Like a lovely surprise. As if we could find an island cooler than the last one. Hello. <laughs> What's your name? Georgia. And don't change your mind, honey. Welcome back to Avalon, kind of sir. Thank you for having me. Welcome to Finding Avalon, a story of a guy and a girl sailing the long way home to Australia. And here's a rundown on what we were up to last week. So we've got bang on a thousand miles run line to Glon. Kind of in the spot at the end of the Caribbean Sea where the energy from the Atlantic Ocean kind of reaches its crescendo. Rock patch, this place. Seven days straight of rather large seas on our journey from the BVI's to Panama. We also need to do some much needed jobs over here. First one, get the engine ignition working again. And hopefully find some new batteries for Avalon as well. So we just left Shelter Bay Marina and now we're making a 20 mile passage back up to Port Alindo. Uh, we're currently bashing into 20 knots of breeze, but luckily it's at a favorable angle of about 40 degrees. Uh, given that we got our new batteries yesterday, we want to give them a really good charge today. So we're actually running the engine all the way up, which will A, charge the batteries with B also get us faster, get us up there faster. It just goes to show like the combination and the power of sails because with our little engine we were doing one and a half, two knots into this swell and breeze and we put the main up with two reefs in it and we're doing five and a half knots now. We put the jib out for a bit and we were doing six and a half knots but we just couldn't hold the right angle of the gym. A little bit too high to the breeze. So we really learned this lesson when we were in Morocco because we were bashing into a breeze that was fluctuating between 30 and 45 knots and there was no way like our we were doing 0.4 of a knot with the engine even going backwards at times. Um, but we put the third reef in the main and all of a sudden we were able to hold about three knots. The reason we didn't want to put any more sail up was because the boat would lean over too much and would just slide sideways and we weren't able to hold forward momentum. So it is a balance between how much sail area you put up um, and where you want to go. But yeah, just a tip trying to motor and not going anywhere fast, try and throw a bit of sail up. So we checked out the extremely small list of things the town had to offer and picked up our new crew for the next couple of weeks. It is with great pleasure that I introduce you to our good friend, Mitch. Welcome back to Avalon, kind sir. Thank you for having me. And you've been here before, haven't you? This is, yeah, round two. You saw me before uh, going through Greece. So me and Jackson went to primary school and high school together. And um, just unfortunately met you through him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, best day of your life, Mitch. You yeah, I was down there the night that Jackson and Xanthi met in the snowy mountains. Some, some time many, many years ago. <laughs> so would you say that potentially 
you are utilitarian in the actual orchestration of finding Avalon coming into being. Yeah, possibly. If I didn't work down there, we might not have yeah. all been down there that weekend. Yeah, so it's probably thanks to you, Mitchell, that Jackson and I met. Yeah. Lucky. Thanks, buddy. No worries. Sailing lessons for the new crew commenced immediately as we made tracks up to the San Blas Islands. That's Jackson's sister Georgia. You'll get to meet her in a few minutes. Sit tight. Oh, I leave what's wrong. Do you want to pick your 90 degrees? Which is pretty much yep. straight in between those two islands, I reckon. Mitch, you're pulling the jib on this time, and I'm letting it off. So, when I say pull, you start pulling. And when I say pull, you're ready to go. And you're going to go back to that same number, which was like... Alright, ready to go and go about George. So there's very limited electronic charts here. Um, I know our Navionics charts are not that good around here. Um, quite poor reviews. So the biggest recommendation is the Eric Bauhaus Panama Cruise Guide. Basically, he's gone around here and charted it all himself, produced really detailed maps. It gives you GPS waypoints, which are safe passages through the reefs. The San Blas Islands, an exquisite archipelago of some 340 oh, islands on the Caribbean coast of Panama. Not only are they unique in beauty, but also in culture. They're home to the Guna Indians, who are said to have by far the best preserved indigenous culture in all the Americas. First stop was Chichime Keys, and the first task, check the anchor so that we could get out and explore freely. As you may be able to tell by the disappearing palm trees, these tiny islands are getting tinier by the minute. And that's all due to climate change. It's even predicted that most of these islands will cease to exist as soon as the year 2050. <laughs> that was lame. <laughs> this is brilliant. I think we got the shot, babe. 
What hashtag are you going to use? Huh? What hashtag are you going to use? Hashtag beach bod. <laughs> Dad bod. <laughs> Dad bod. <laughs> as juicy and tempting as the coconuts are that pepper the islands, you aren't allowed to help yourself. Coconuts are actually the mainstay of the Guna's economy. And it was only up until a few years ago that the crop was the tribe's official means of exchange. And the Guna skin divers didn't waste much time before paying us a visit to present their catch of the day. then time to introduce you to this amazing human. Georgia. About 26 years ago I met this person called Jackson who <laughs> happens to be my brother um, and he had a crazy idea to sail around the world with Xanth so it'd be rude if I didn't come. I live in the middle of Australia in the outback um, in a place called Broken Hill in New South Wales. What colour is the ground? Same colour as my shirt, red. <laughs> I'm a social worker and I work in violence, abuse and neglect. Um, yeah. Big up to you, G. Thank you. I love my job. So, oh. nice to have a holiday from it though. Oh, Put a little prayer out to see a turtle and I've already seen that. And I wanted to see some beautiful islands. We've already seen that. And I wanted to see the Zan Jackson. And I've already seen them. So, Hello. the next 10 days can't get much better if you ask me. Going to a um, sunken pole ship. It's apparently only three to five meters below the ocean bed. So pretty cool to check out. What island is that on? Uh, the Dog Isle. Welcome to Dog Island, everyone. I think Jackson's frothing. Are you frothing? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's frothing. <laughs> this cargo ship was sunk here in the 1950s. It was taking on water whilst passing the San Blas, so the captain made the decision to intentionally beach it with full power on Dog Island, so as to salvage the cargo, which was mostly rum.
Ooh. Yeah, so we've got eight of them. Oh. bit of Spanish mackerel left over from the sale that day and the Aussies were naturally keen to chuck it on the barbie. So to barbecue island we trundled, an island that got its name from the self-service barbecues dotted around the island. Not too clean, sheltered or impressive actually so we made a last minute alteration to the plan. Hi, we went to barbecue island to have a good old Aussie barbecue but testing out our new fire grill. How much did we pick that one up for? It's a two dollar contraption. Oh, bargain. From the Panamanian version of Walmart. We hope you loved this one guys, if you did please smash the thumbs up button and join us next week for more Sam Blast shenanigans but this time with a few engine hiccups for both Avalon and the locals. Yeah I think one of our engine mounts, the actual thread of it's broken. And everyone air jump high five our patrons who are the driving force behind these videos. Thanks guys.